All right, I am three classes. Uh, lesson for today, we're talking from module 5.2, inverses of functions. So what we're gonna be doing today is looking at functions and I'm gonna teach you how to find the inverse by solving. Uh, first, let's talk about what the actual, what an inverse function is. So an inverse function is when the X's and Y's just switch. The inputs become the outputs, the outputs become the inputs. So a uh, quick example from here. We have a, a basic function with a domain that maps one to one to a range. So 16 maps to 18, 33 to 31, 12 to 48, 38 to 6, 18 to 40. What the inverse does is this range, this in these outputs now become the inputs, and then the inputs map to the other way. So it just reverses the flow of the input output. So 18 maps to 16, 31 to 33, 48 to 12, 6 to 38, 40 to 18. All right, so here, a more complicated function. It doesn't have the one-to-one -one mapping like this. Um, so we can see here, negative five maps to one. So one needs to map to a negative five. Put negative three maps to nine. All right, so nine down here is mapping up to negative three. Negative one also maps one. So negative one is gonna have two outputs or positive one rather. So positive one needs to map to a negative one. All right, and we can finish this to nine. Um, three maps to nine, so we need another three. So it just reverses the, the input and output or the X's and Y's, all right? How you find an inverse by solving, it's really easy to solve, all right? Uh, so sometimes you're gonna have functions that look like this. You're gonna have um, uh, F of X is equal to four X. First thing I'm gonna do is change the F of X to a Y because uh, that's just easier to work with. Next, I'm gonna solve for X in terms of Y. What that means is all I'm going to do is solve this equation for X, right? So uh, I am gonna put in a line of separation just to keep track of the different sides of the equation here. Scroll up so you, you can read those directions. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is add eight to both sides. And solve them for x, so the minus eight plus eight cancels out. Y plus eight, that's just y plus eight. They're not like terms, you can't combine them, so it's just y plus eight is equal to four x. Next thing, I need to eliminate the fourth to finish solving for x, so I divide both sides by four. Over here, make sure you divide the whole thing by four. You need to divide the entire side of that, that function by four. So times four divided by four cancels out. So you're just left with X is equal to, uh, this doesn't simplify, we're not gonna divide that out. We can just leave it as Y plus eight over four. All right, the last step here, switch the X and Y since the inverse switches inputs and outputs. So once we're solved here, I'm just gonna switch the X and Y. So I'm gonna rewrite it as Y is equal to X plus eight over four, make that X a little bit nicer. And then if you really want to, you can replace with uh, F, uh, uh, the inverse of F of X is the notation for there, is X plus eight over four. And that's it. So let's look at another example, All right? Um, this one's already in Y equals, so I'm gonna put in a line of separation. First step to solving for X now is I need to subtract 12 from both sides. You get Y minus 12 is equal to negative four X. Divide both sides by negative four, make sure you divide the whole side. So this cancels out, you get Y minus 12 divided by negative four is equal to X. Um, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit with the negatives. So this negative um, gets kind of like distributed to both terms in the top. So what's gonna happen, I'm gonna make the X of Y is equal to um, four on the bottom and it's gonna be negative Y or excuse me, negative X plus 
12. So what's happening is this negative, I'm moving it to the top. And then I am distributing it just so it looks a little bit nicer. I'm having the negative on the bottom there. All right. And then last, if you want, you can always write it with the, um, you can change the Y. Actually, since this is why we can just leave it like this and say it is the inverse. All right. So next one. Uh, first thing, I'm going to rewrite it with y so y is equal to x plus one over six all right this one uh you might be tempted to subtract one first you can't subtract one on this one first because it's all in the numerator we have to get rid of the six on the bottom so that's uh x plus one divided by six the opposite divided by six is multiplying by six so i get six y is equal to times six divided by six over here cancels out, x plus one. Then I subtract one from both sides. These are not like terms, you cannot combine them. You just leave it as six y minus one is equal to x. And then rewrite it um, over here. So it would, it would be y is equal to six x minus one. Uh, and then because it is using f of x, I'm going to use the inverse of f of x is equal to 6x minus 1. <clears throat> so here we have a negative, so same type of problem. Uh, so I can't, um, multiple, I can't subtract the 5 first. What I'm going to do is uh, when it's negative out front like that, I am going to multiply both sides by negative 2. What that's going to do is it's going to cancel out the 2s. That in red, cancel out the 2s and the negatives. So negative times negative becomes positive. So over here, I get negative 2y is equal to positive x plus 5. And then last step is to subtract five from both sides. So plus five minus five cancels out. Get negative two y minus five. Remember they are not like terms, you cannot combine them. It's equal to x. Rewrite it, switching the x's and y's, so it's gonna be y is equal to negative two x minus five. We'll just leave it as a y because no f of x notation on there. All right, next one, more fractions. Very cool. All right, uh, line of separation. First thing I'm going to do here is add five to both sides. Want that in green. So add five to eliminate the minus five. So we'll get y plus five is equal to two thirds x. I'm going to split this fraction into two steps. Um, since this is two times x divided by three, um, I'm going to eliminate the divide by three first by multiplying both sides by three. So that will eliminate. Um, you can distribute that three. So three times y is three y plus three times five is 15. And it is equal to two x. And then divide both sides by two. Make sure you divide the whole thing. So times two divided by two cancels out. Uh, so you get three y plus 15 all over two is equal to x. So rewrite it, switching the x's and y's. So it's three y is equal to three uh, x plus 15 all over two. All right, so radical functions. So same idea, we are just doing the opposite. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite this without the f of x notation. So it's gonna be y is equal to square root of x, All right? So the opposite of square rooting something is to square it. So to get rid of the square root on the x, I'm going to square both sides. So I get y squared is equal to uh, square root squared just cancels out y squared is equal to x. And just rewrite it, switch the x and y, so it's going to be um, y is equal to x squared.
So here, a little bit more involved one. This is quite a bit more involved. So I'm going to rewrite this without the f of x, so I don't have to worry about it. So it's y is equal to 3 times, oh, the fifth root plus 1. So we have a lot going on in this one. Kind of jumped up in the difficulty there. That's fine. Um, first thing I need to do before I get into the square root, uh, I need to get take root. Take, take care of the three on the outside. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. So I get y divided by three times three divided by three cancels out. So y divided by three is equal to the fifth root of x plus one. All right? I can't subtract the one because it's underneath this root. Um, so since I'm taking the fifth root, the opposite of the fifth root is the fifth power. So I'm going to take fifth power of the whole thing. I'm just going to leave it written like that. Y over three all to the fifth power is equal to the fifth root and the fifth power just cancel out and I just get X plus one. Last step, subtract one from both sides. Again, uh, I'm going to leave it as Y divided by three all to the fifth power minus one is equal to x. Last thing, I'm going to write it, switch the x and y, so it's y is equal to x over 3, x divided by 3 to the fifth power minus 1 is the inverse. <clears throat> Another long one. Cool. So y is equal to 2x minus 5 cubed. I'm just replacing the f of x notation with y. Um, that's just easier to write. Uh, so next, first thing I'm going to do before I get into side, I have to work outside the parentheses, and I'm going to cube root and all that stuff, and then get on the inside. So first thing, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get y minus 4 is equal to 2x minus 5 cubed. Next, the opposite of cubing something is cube root. So I make the square root, the radical symbol with a little 3 in the nook. All right. On both sides. This isn't going to simplify over here. So you just leave it as the cube root of y minus 3. And now the cube root and the cube cancel out, so I get 2x minus 5. Still solving on this one. Uh, I need to add 5 to both sides. Man, this is a lot going on with this one. So uh, that's going to be on the outside of the root. So it's y minus 3. That's on the inside of the root. Plus 5 on the outside is equal to 2x. And then the very last step is to divide by 2. And you have to divide the whole thing over here by two. So it's going to be, the final answer is going to be the cube root of y minus three. That's all I need in the parentheses or underneath the radical plus five all over two is equal to x. And then the last step, rewrite it, switch the x and y. So y is equal to cube root x minus 3 plus 5 all over 2. That was a longer problem. Cool. Um, my slides are out of order. This one's a lot easier compared to the ones we just did. Uh, so I'm actually going to see it. It's just the fifth root. We've already done one with the root. Um, and we've already done one like that. So I'm going to skip it for right now. That's another long one. Maybe we'll do one more long one so we can see how everything works. Here. So, uh, first thing, rewrite it and actually rewrite it just right here in the middle so I have more space to work on the side. So it's y is equal to 3x minus 5 cubed plus 4. First thing I need to do is subtract four from both sides. So y minus four is just y minus four is equal to three x minus five cubed. Then I'm going to cube root everything. 
Make sure you do the entire side. This doesn't simplify, so it is just the cube root of y minus four is equal to three x minus five. The cube root and the cube cancel each other out. Uh, next step, add five. So it's going to be cube root of y minus 4 plus 5 all over. No, not there yet. Getting ahead of myself, looking, working ahead. Is equal to 3x. The minus 5 plus 5 cancel out. Make sure the plus 5 over here is outside of the root. All right, last step, divide both sides. Make sure you divide the whole side by 3. And so... It's going to be cube root of y minus 4 plus 5 divided by 3 is equal to x. So the final, did it, we use f of x notation on this one? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to use the f of x notation. The f of negative 1, that's the inverse of x, is equal to change the y to an x. Cube root of x minus 4 plus 5 all over three. All right. So last ones we're going to do are rational functions. All right. So same thing. I'm going to switch the f of x to a y. And you might be confused of what to do here because there's an x on bottom. Um, what you want to do is actually multiply both sides by x to get the x out of the bottom of the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. Times x divided by x cancels out over here. And I just have x times y on this side is equal to 3. Now I still want to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by y so times y divided by y you get x is equal to 3 over y and here's something interesting when you rewrite it you get the same thing so this function is the inverse of itself so when you switch out the, um, I'm actually going to switch that to the f of negative 1 the, f to the inverse of f of x so when we solved and then you replace things, the inverse and the original function are the same. So let's look at one where it's not quite going to be the same. So uh, first thing, I'm going to start off, change the f of x to a y is equal to 2x over x minus 1. Get x by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, add 1 to both sides. So I get y plus 1 is equal to 2 over x. Next, like I did, since x is on the bottom, I want out of the bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. We're getting to cross things out there. Cancel out. These cancel out. Be careful when you multiply here. Make sure you multiply the whole side like that. So you get x times y plus 1 is equal to 2. All right, don't distribute, don't do that. It's all you're gonna do now, all right, this might seem a little tricky at first, but all you're gonna do now is just divide both sides by x plus one. So divided by, excuse me, y plus one. Divided by the whole term. So y plus one cancels out the y plus one there. So I'm left with x is equal to two times or two divided by y plus one. Switch out the f of x or the x for of f of the inverse of f of x is equal to two over x plus one. All right, so next one, place the f of x with y. And then I'm going to solve. So here, I have this whole term in the bottom. Sometimes it might help to 
put parentheses around, actually I shouldn't turn the whole uh, binomial in the bottom, put parentheses around it. And then I'm gonna multiply by both sides by that whole thing. All right, so the X minus five on the bottom cancels out the X minus five there. And I get X minus five times Y is equal to four. Right. So now I'm going to divide both sides by Y. Remember, we're trying to get X by itself. So divide both sides by Y times Y divided by Y cancels out. I have X minus five is equal to four over Y. Now I can add five to both sides. Ooh, that's an ugly one. Plus five, plus five. So that cancels out. I get X is equal to four over Y plus five. Now rewrite it as the inverse. So it's gonna be the inverse of F of X is equal to four over X plus, one, uh, plus five. Again, you just take this, change the y to an x, and the inverse of f of x. All right. We'll just do, uh, we'll do, yeah, we'll do two more. Why not? No, not yet. What I want to do is change the f of x to y, so it's y is equal to 6 over x minus 7 minus 3. First thing I need to do is eliminate the minus three. So I'm going to add three to both sides. So I get Y plus three is equal to six over X minus seven. Remember this X minus seven is that whole thing. So to get that out of the bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by X minus seven. And when you do this, you're going to want to put parentheses out around the X plus three. So I get X minus seven times Y plus three is equal to six. So this whole thing cancels out that thing. I want to cancel it out with red. There we go. That looks better. We got to cancel those out. All right. Um, now, again, I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by y plus 3. So times y plus 3 on the top and bottom cancel out, and I have x minus 7 is equal to 6 divided by y plus 3. And then the last step is to add 7 to both sides. So you get y is equal to 6 over y plus 3 plus 7. Right, write it as the inverse of f of x. And so it's going to be 6 over x plus 3 plus 7. Last one. Um, let me rewrite it. I'm going to do a little shortcut rewriting it. I'm just going to erase this, change it to a Y, and now I'm going to solve. So I want to subtract four from both sides. So I get Y minus four is equal to negative three over X plus two. I'm not even gonna worry about the negative right now. I'm just gonna multiply both sides by uh, X plus two. So, right. good, how you doing? What's that? You only sweep on Wednesdays? Okay. Um, the rest of the day, 